Hey guys, Erin here with LaCour Couture, and today we're gonna get into part two of how I started my jewelry brand, LaCour Couture. But before we do that, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and let's get right into it. All right, so hopefully you watched part one of how I started LaCour Couture, but if you didn't, stop now, go back, watch part one, and then come back for part two so you could see how crazy this business has been and how wild this journey has been for me. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you have seen me talk about lots of things in history about jewelry, pearls, different stones, simulated diamonds versus real diamonds, lab grown, all that stuff. And I think it's really important for you guys to know a little bit about me and why I am talking about all this stuff jewel related because, you know, I could just be a regular person and why on earth am I talking about all this jewelry and I really want to get to know you guys. I really want you to be able to get to know me as a person and why I do what I love and how and why I started Le Cor Couture. And if you're looking to start a jewelry brand and or you're looking to start a business that hopefully you learn some lessons from me, maybe get some valuable information and are able to really help take your brand to the next level. All right, so we left off in going into the pandemic in 2020. So again, 2018, I left my job and, you know, I dabbled here and there in jewelry, sold here and there, but I wasn't like fully committed. I didn't take it really seriously yet. I was dabbling, but I wasn't full, full in. So now it's March 2020. Everybody is it's a shit show, right? Everybody is going crazy. We don't know where we're getting toilet paper. We don't know what we're doing. And... I decide that I want to really take La Couture to the next level. I mean, who wouldn't want to buy jewelry in a pandemic, right? When we can't get food. Anyway, crazy idea, but I was home bored to death with my kids and I said, you know what, what's it going to hurt? So in July of 2020, I did a relaunch, big branding live sale where I literally had hundreds of people that showed up on this sale. I sold out of everything. My community, my friends really showed up and supported me, which I, I truly was blown away. And I still am blown away by their support and the community that has just really allowed me to follow my dreams. Like I couldn't do any of this without them, but side note. So anyway, I'm doing this live. And after the live, I'm like on a high, I'm so pumped. Like I sold out of everything. I'm like, yes. I'm going to take LaCorca to the next level. I'm doing this. Anyway, my husband was so proud of me. We were like cheering. We were, anyway, we we're so excited. So right after the live, I get a text message from somebody who I know through like the business world. Um, he's in the marketing field and he reached out to me and said, Hey, are you really serious about launching LaCour Couture and taking it to the next level and like becoming a worldwide brand? And I was like, uh, duh. And so basically from that moment on, you know, he basically said to me, I want to become your partner. I feel like you're super talented. You have an amazing product. People love it. People love you. Let's do this together. And his whole entire world has been in Facebook marketing, like Facebook ads, you know, Google ads, all that stuff. And that's the type of stuff I really, as an artist, I don't know anything about that. Like that's literally on another planet to me. Like all I wanted to do was create fun jewelry, make funny videos, connect with my customers and that's it. And honestly, I probably could have gone on like that for years and been completely happy. But at the same time, when he proposed this to me, I was like, you know, this could be a really great opportunity. And he showed me like all these stats of other companies that he's taken, like me, that from nothing to grow them to $100,000 a month to multi-million dollar companies. So it doesn't, it, I don't know many people that would refuse this. I didn't have to put any money up front. It was an investment. It was an investor that wanted to invest in me and my brand. And you know, there's only so much I could do on my own and take it on my own. So I said, you know what? I've known this person for a long time. I trust them. Let's do this. So we became partners. And shortly after that, we were working on our website. I was working on all the new collections we were going to be launching. And I was learning so much. I knew nothing about like collections. I never thought about seasons. I never thought about sales. I never really thought about ads, making an ad like, Hey, this is Aaron. Make sure you shop now. Honestly, you guys, the amount, it took a good year of a learning curve to understand ads, 
what goes into running a website, shipping, inventory, how to track trends, how to make sure we're doing sales at the appropriate times, you know, not underselling ourselves, not overpricing ourselves. It was like I went back to graduate school, but this time for jewelry making. I mean, it was so intense, but I was loving every minute of it. And anyway, so this was in July. He approached me and we're like, done, let's do this. We start creating our website. We're so pumped. We're creating ads. We're doing all this stuff. I was completely overwhelmed by all of it, but I was doing it. I was learning. I was going along for the ride. And then in September of 2020, the big Apple crash, in my opinion, happened, which was when they changed all of the privacy settings. I'm sure you guys remember. Remember like in 2020, in the pandemic, there was like a Netflix special release talking about our privacy being so unsafe on the internet and on our phones and these advertisers get all our info and da 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 da. Anyway, Apple went totally rogue and they just literally slammed the hammer and said no more privacy sharing. Like we can't share any information with advertisers, Facebook, anywhere for people to use to target people for ads, okay? Which in my mind, I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, we'll be fine. Because I didn't really understand it. But let me tell you something. That was probably like the worst timing of my life. It was like getting a damn lotto ticket and then losing the ticket, okay? I had been given the golden ticket to get into Willy Wonka's factory and then it was revoked because this person was so, my investor was so used to be able to turn up businesses just by, you know, a crank and a couple dollars a day and whatever. And anyway, the entire platform changed. So if you know nothing about what I'm talking about, basically what I'm talking about is when you get served an ad, for example, like if you're scrolling Facebook and earlier that day you were looking at La Cor Couture jewelry on my website, right? But then you're scrolling Facebook and you all of a sudden see an ad for La Cor Couture on Facebook. Guess what? That advertiser was able to know you're interested in jewelry, you're interested in the brand, and they were able to connect you to something that you may be interested in purchasing, right? So this was like a great tool. I mean, this is a multi-billion dollar industry that was literally the carpet ripped out from under all these advertisers. I knew nothing about this stuff. So for me, I was like confused. I didn't really understand it. I knew my investor was freaking out, but I was just like, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Let me tell you something. Do not ever stop organic Facebook, organic Instagram, organic TikTok, because those things really did keep us afloat while we've been trying to figure out how to work around this whole ad debacle, right? Because here I'm thinking, I'm going into business with someone that will know how to market me, know how to put the ads in the right people's eyes and all that, which is exactly what I needed to take my brand to the next level. And all of that just came crashing down on me. And honestly, it was a huge buzzkill. Like it was beyond a buzzkill. I was pretty devastated and to be honest i'm still dealing with it to this day um but we quickly had to figure out okay we're not going to take all this work and effort and time that you've been building up this brand for all these years and just like throw it in the garbage no so what's plan b and honestly i think like a lot of investors might have done that because that's his niche that's what he knows how to do but i really I'm so happy that this person is my investor because he didn't just throw in the towel and say f it we're done he was like, okay, what else can we do to make this brand pop, to get it out to the community, to get it out to the public? And then that's when we started doing something called SEO, which was something I had also heard of, which we've all heard of ads, SEO, you know, all this different stuff in the social media marketing world. But oh my gosh, it was like going back to school again to learn another thing. So SEO is like Google, it's Google ads. So like you can rank for different things. So let's say you type in gold bohemian necklace. Okay. Le Cor Couture, my boho babe necklace, which is this gorgeous piece may show up on page 1 million, right? Because I'm a nobody to Google at this point. Okay. But SEO and investing into this, 
This will help you actually start ranking with different keywords and helping your brand and your business rank higher and higher. The more keywords you get, the more traction you get and so forth. And really the point of me telling you all these specific details is that you just should never give up on your business and your dream because there are going to be hurdles that you will never imagine, but there's always a workaround. There's always a plan B. And even when you have a plan A, plan B and plan C, something's going to go wrong and you may have to go to plan Z, which is what we've done multiple times with the Corkator. But anyway, we've been growing our SEO. We started a blog where we blog about amazing different topics about jewelry. And then we started the YouTube channel where we were able to really bring those blogs to life and talk about the jewelry and, you know, history of jewelry and fashion and all these different things. And all of this is helping rank Le Corps Couture and it's building and building the SEO. So if you look at a graph like this, our SEO started at zero doing nothing. And over the last two years, since I went into business with my business partner and we've been growing, you could literally see this spike in SEO. And now we're getting daily, you know, orders and things are going well, but I'll tell you what, this has been an insane, insane learning curve. I can't even tell you guys, but you just don't ever want to give up. And there's still so much more to my story and how we've been growing the brand. So make sure you like, subscribe, and follow, and stay tuned for part three of how I started and am currently growing Le Corps Couture to be a worldwide jewelry brand. And if you want to check out my jewelry, fashion, other tips, make sure you click one of the videos above me and I'll see y'all in the next one.